Good evening, Carol and John shoppers. Uh, happy Tuesday night. No, you cannot scan my shirt. We tried. It doesn't take you to any kind of secret fun website or anything at all. Right? Right. Andrew tried. John Cheer tried with his uh, flip phone <laughs> to see if it was one of those. Uh, welcome to Tuesday night. We are going to get to the table in a minute. We've got a couple of updates like we normally do. What's the first one? Oh, uh, we get to introduce somebody tonight. I'm gonna introduce these guys because John, you know, Andrew, you know, Kyle's behind the camera as always, but we have a new, I don't wanna say staff member, a new support, piece of support staff. We made a droid. Is, uh, this is CJ90, a uh, little bit vision impaired. So deal with her, um, she'll help you through the store. If you can understand her, um, she's very well versed in the inventory of our comic books, but. I think I might be the only one who can understand. Um, yeah, like that's what I told them. Um, what was the other thing I had to? Oh, first, um, late night comics is this week. Thank you. Uh, late night comics is this week. Okay, all right. I'm trying to have a conversation. Here. Uh, Thursday night, the 18th, is two days away. It's late night comics. We're coming back after a two month hiatus because of sales and holidays and whatnot, and we're coming back with a bang. 50 cents a book. We're not doing dollar books this month. It is 50 cents a book. Essentially half off of normal, completely half off of normal. You don't have to buy 100, you can come in and get books for 50 cents. Uh, John Dudas texted me right before we did this video and wanted me to uh, drive the point home that he is committed to late night comics no matter what the weather is like. He is going to sling 80, probably more if I know him, long boxes from our storage locker, which is very cold. I was just there the other day. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna help. Your arms are very little. Um, <laughs> he's going to sling 80 long boxes into the store, no matter the weather. So he would love everybody to turn up, no matter the weather. He's committed. Very committed. He used the word committed three times in that text message. <laughs> um, but that's it, it for updates. Uh, that's what's coming up. We have some stuff brewing in February. Um, the shop's shifting around a little bit. We're going to have a dedicated dollar section we showed you last week. Um, so that's pretty cool. I am missing one thing. Oh first appearances and then we'll get to the table which has a banger at the bottom um i know it was good one first appearance this week uh miguel o'era spider-man 2099 is the first appearance of werewolf 2099 and he kills dudes in water that's kind of weird for a werewolf but that's cool um but yeah at the bottom of the table we started off with one of our most anticipated books of the week just because how good this Energon universe is developing at Image. So we've got a new one, uh, starting with the G.I. Joe stuff. Cobra Commander number one is fantastic. It is a little bit of an origin story that takes some old G.I. Joe tropes that were tropey and dopey and odd and makes them very cool. At least that's what the G.I. Joe fan in the room told me. So there are people, there are certain things about the G.I. Joe universe that people very much dislike and they know that when they made this and they're like we're going to make you like it and they do uh it is a five issue miniseries just like the duke one that kicked off uh, a couple weeks ago uh it's the other side of that coin but it does include an origin story for cobra commander for people like me who are very unfamiliar with where that dude's coming from and it's pretty hardcore and if you like duke you'll like this it's written by the same guy and they tie everything together super duper well can't can't say I recommend it any more than that. It's great. It's yeah. phenomenal, and I'm excited for both miniseries and then whatever comes after. So, uh, that is cool. That's your cover A. We've got a blank variant. Um, Boss did this variant, I believe. Tyler uh -huh. Boss did. David Aja. That's Aja? Oh, okay. My bad. Aja, please. If you say Boss, I'll still give it to you. And then 1 in 10 variant. We have a 1 in 50 variant and a 1 in 25. It's pretty classic. Pretty classic variant. Um, one other number one. From Image this week is The Weatherman, another beginning of a miniseries. It's the third iteration of Weatherman, third miniseries in that line. Um, it's a wild sci-fi romp. I did not follow the second one, so I can't tell you where this one lands. Uh, but the first volume is phenomenal. Um, I think they're each seven issues. So um, That's what's going on there. Let's go. Oh, yeah. And then uh, one collected edition from Image this week, Odd Spot on the Table. It's I Hate Fairyland, volume six. Enfield Gang wraps up, number six. It was the first thing on Kyle's reading list. I imagine mm. it was... I actually have not. Oh. Read it. Oh. There was a bunch of other stuff. We should probably list. just go home now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phantom Road is on issue number eight. We've got uh, The Bloody Dozen with the Shrouded College Tale at number two in that miniseries. Spawn Scorched is on number 25. Let's call that one cover A, and this one's cover B. 
Uh, we got the Deviant at number three, a really well-developed Tinian horror story, a little bit autobiographical, I'm assuming. Sounds like it anyway. Uh, that's cover A, and then we've got A, 1 in 25. Super creepy the longer you look at it. Yeah, that's a hand and foot and body and stuff. <laughs> uh, Creep Show is on issue number five, so this wraps up that second mini series at Image. That's your cover A, that's your cover B. This is uh, actually a 1 in 10 variant, but it's a connecting cover, and it's just creepy and cool. We didn't price it up. G.I. Joe Real American Heroes on number 303. Um, angry Serpentor. Yeah, he, he's real angry looking. And then there's your cover B for that one. I actually think I forgot to pull this or something. Come back. Uh, and then one last thing from Image. It is a one-shot. It's nice and oversized, big of a thick boy, and it's essentially exactly what it sounds like. It's called The Colonized. It is... Classic zombies versus classic aliens. I'm talking your shambling hordes of undead and your little green men with gadgets. It is fun and straightforward, and it's got a great brick of via cover. Yeah, and it's the size of a graphic novel for $9.99. Oh, cool. All right, sweet. I didn't look at the price. Um, what? Collected stuff? C- collected stuff, sure. Yeah, collected stuff from Marvel. I'll just go right here. Oh, I'm just I, this. Yeah, okay. I designed it that way. <laughs> um, Avengers Beyond, the, all five issues of that Greg Land miniseries. Moving on. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) New Mutants, Lethal Legion. Uh, Been a while since that book came out, but it's five issues uh, against the Shadow King. You've got Incredible Hulk, one of our favorite new ongoing series from Marvel. Great, great Hulk stuff. That's volume one. And then one epic collection from Marvel this week, Amazing Spider-Man, Clone Saga stuff. Clone Saga, volume one. This is where John Shear shuts up. Yeah, where is he? (laughs) Uh, Last one is uh, one of the mighty Marvel masterworks, The Black Panther. This will be volume two. For the uh, digest size stuff. Then we got a bunch of Star Wars. High Republic uh, is on issue number three of phase three. Uh, we got cover A right there, cover B right here, and cover C. Bounty Hunters wraps up. It's the last issue of Star Wars Bounty Hunters. Went longer than I thought it would. Issue number 42. It's an oversized issue, uh, and it wraps up well. Has a big old cool droid happening at the end of it. Mm-hmm. And we got a cover B for that one. One last Star Wars book. It says Obi-Wan Kenobi number four in the miniseries. That's your cover A. This is your cover B. And then... <laughs> I don't even have the remote. What remote? What are you talking about? She can say whatever she wants. <laughs> she likes Obi-Wan. That was weird. That threw me off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cap Wolf and the Howling Commandos. It's the last issue of that miniseries. So four of four. And we got uh, Miracle Man Silver Age there on number seven. That's cover A. That's cover B. And that's cover C. I don't know what I uncovered there. Uh, Daredevil on number five. Fun She-Hulk issue. She gets possessed by gluttony, and Daredevil's kind of leaning into the religious side of his life, so he has to exercise her, and then there's kind of a sexy sentence from Dr. Strange at the end. Uh, <laughs> great cover, too, Rita. So uh, that's cover A. That's cover B, your Wolverine variant. And we got a 1 in 25 there. Uh, Alien is on number three of their current miniseries. That'll be your cover A. Here's your cover B, and you're super, duper gross cover like one one in 25 <laughs> alien eaten alien tearing alien apart um falling in line with the fall of the house of x Ugh. uh invincible iron man uh you've got him and emma frost uh, still on the run so that's number 14 we got the one in 50 marvel masterpieces uh, all art cover and then a one in 25 variant for that one next to it spider-man 2099 this Legacy 100th issue, which is kind of fun, is the first appearance of Werewolf 2099 with the Monster of the Week situation continuing. I think next week is the Mummy? I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, but that's number three in the miniseries, and then you've got a 1 in 10 design variant for that Werewolf there. Uh, another wonderful issue of Fantastic Four, this one focusing on the recently returned extended family of the Fantastic Four and their new school days. And it's just it was just fun. It felt like an episode of like a, a Nickelodeon show. Like, it was. It was super fun. John Shear's not caught up. I just caught up on Fantastic Four. And I have to say, of the ongoing series in the store that, like, I don't think enough people are reading, that's probably my current one. That I, like, Hulk's good. Ghost Rider's good. We have good following. But FF, like, catch up on that book. Uh, written by Ryan North, too. So, tried and true. One in 25 variant for that one. New number one. It's a one-shot. It's going to kick off a miniseries that starts with Jackpot and Black Cat next month, maybe the month after. Um, but this is a one-shot. Featuring Jackpot, this is the first time Mary Jane uses her powers in her own title book, which is kind of cool. Uh, it is a gang war tie-in, too, loosely, but it's there. Um, so that's cover A. Uh, we got cover B, cover C, and cover D. Anything else you got to add about that one? 
No, uh, she fights a female Electro in this one. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, one of the, the new Sinister Six things. That's yeah. the Danny War part. White Widows on number three of the miniseries, so three of five. That's your cover A. That's your cover B. X-Men is on Fall of the House of X still, so we're on number 30. Big issue. That's your cover A. We got a 1 in 60 variant by Simone Bianchi, which I haven't seen a 1 in 60 variant before. Kind of yeah. weird. Uh, almost feels like a typo. <laughs> uh, one facsimile edition for Marvel this week. Right? Just one? Yep. yep. Uh, Marvel Secret Su- Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars. My least favorite title of any classic book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's your regular cover. And then we've got a spiffy, shiny foil variant that you can tell is shiny and spiffy because Kyle made sure it said, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Middle of the table gets us back to Guardians of the Galaxy. They're in issue number 10. Uh, next to it, you got Black Panther on number 8 uh, and a 1 in 25 variant for that book. Gang War is on probably its penultimate chapter in Amazing Spider Man, I think. Uh, two more issues. Is it two more? Yeah. Okay. So, issue number 42, Gang War tie in for ASM. Uh, that's your cover A, and we've got a very cool uh, Dodson, right? Yeah. 1 in 25 variant. Uh, number one in the middle of the table is Cable. So this is continuing with the Fall of the House of X stuff. Uh, it's a five-issue miniseries. It's Cable teaming up with – old Cable teaming up with young Cable, and they get the language of these two dudes perfect. I don't love every Cable book I've ever read. I didn't love this book, but, like, it's certainly not the worst, and it's a fun fit into the Fall of X stuff where they're doing some detective work, and they're kind of, like, beating the enemy behind the enemy sort of thing. Uh it's fun. They're, like, fighting stuff that other people aren't even aware of, which is kind of cable stick. And there's a lot of big guns. Um, <laughs> good pouches. Good artwork. Good. And he even makes, he makes jokes about the pouches, too. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great, yeah. So that's uh, cover A for Cable. You got a Stormbreaker cover. We got a 1 in 25 cover. And we definitely got the cover of the freaking week right here. The 1 in 50 Ramita Cable cover is classic Ramita, classic Cable, great colors. I love that. That's a great, great um, single issue. And then, top of the table, right? Yeah, yeah. Avengers Twilight is a five-issue miniseries that's starting this week. I'll hold it up, because it was good. Uh, written by Chip Zdarsky. It is called Avengers Twilight because the Avengers, as we know them, are in their Twilight years. They is, it is a reasonable amount of time in the future to where the Secret Soldier Serum has left Steve Rogers kind of organically. He's the main uh, character focus in the book. You meet Luke Cage in his old age, who's like, unbreakable skin has kind of hardened i mean like it makes sense that these organic based powers would decay in some way or affect them later in life but there's still threats to the world and the universe and the world of the avengers and like some good history there is a really solid solid book akuna's artwork is wonderful oh yeah uh there is there's a lot of stuff that they use in the future that is pertinent to today and it's He's make Luke Cage is making a new team and he's calling it the Defenders and Steve's like no we're gonna make it the Avengers <laughs> yeah that's it's true yeah. Uh, yeah great great Star Trek main series good one to give a try to uh, this is cover B this is cover C which Kyle's gonna buy <laughs> this is cover D this is cover E and this is cover F uh, below it we have a spiffy shiny variant see it says so right there. Uh, that's 12 bucks. That's cool. And then a, another one in 60 variant, which very much mirrors that one. That must be where that's coming from. Okay, cool. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Understood. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is the Marvel side of the table and I'm super jealous because John Trenard gets to talk about Wonder Woman number five. Because Wonder Woman number five comes out this week and it's fantastic. What it is in a nutshell is Wonder Woman knows there's going to be a big war going on and she's like, I don't want any of my friends involved. And so Yara, Wonder Girl, and Donna Troy, they all have to fight her. And if Wonder Woman wins, they all have to sit it out. And they all do different things, and it's wonderful. It's great. It has a wonderful last page to it. Uh, And while this is going on, Sergeant Steel is making his own team of enemies for Wonder Woman. And that's great, too. It's a classic use of Tom King using villains that we want to see used interestingly yes and i'm really excited about it so yeah so we've got the regular cover for that there we've got cover b by lyrics uh there we have a 1 in 25 variant we have a 1 in 50 black and white variant looks like she's water skiing she might be (laughs) in her her (laughs) free time yeah i mean there's certain things she does in her free time that pay off in in this issue so yeah uh, penultimate issue for Green Lantern uh, War Journal. Uh, the the best thing is 
John says it many, many times. I am a Green Lantern and I can do anything. And he believes it. And it's great. So you got your regular cover for that there. But then Superman's back in the Old West. He got pushed back into the past. And he's gunfighting. He really is. Uh, but more importantly, Moonlight, who's on the 1 in 25 variant, you get her whole story within there as well. And it's actually really, really cool. Um, so you got your regular cover, you got your 125, and then you got your 1 in 50. That's my favorite. Let's I'm draw. Like, essentially a one shot, too. Yeah. In, in a lot of ways. <clears throat> yep. So uh, Hellblazer Dead in America, issue number one. Uh, Constantine is as it says, in America, and he is being followed by all sorts of, like, dreams, including Sandman himself. Uh, and what else, Andrea? What's the, he, the big one? Oh, my bad. The big one? Yeah. I is mean, there, he's, like, he's hanging out with a kid. His son. Yeah. Uh, and one of their friends. They're driving around America in a double-decker bus <laughs> because they're trying to be incognito. <laughs> And I think that's a good enough selling yeah. point right there. So you got your regular cover there and your 1 in 25 variant for that one there. Uh, Titans uh, sold out of the regular cover because it's Beast War tie-in. But you got your 1 in 25 variant there and your 1 in 50 variant there with the awesome, creepy, coming out of the mouth, <laughs> Stario. Star, Starro. Uh, Batman Superman World's Finest number 23. Uh, the penultimate book in the Rise of Magog. Uh, lots of stuff going on in there. Lots of fighting. And as Batman keeps telling people, Superman always tells the truth. It's a big selling point in this one with another great final page. Uh, we got your regular cover there. You got your cover B by Jason Sean Alexander, which is fantastic. Uh, you got your 1 in 25 variants. And your one in fifty variants. I just realized Joker's getting his dentures knocked out. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> awesome. Uh, Catwoman's on issue sixty-one, um, and she is going through some stuff. It's Nine Lives Part Three, but you can just read this one. There is a lot of stuff going on because she does have nine lives, and it's really, really tragic and cool and amazing, and ends with a cool guest appearance at the end of the book. You got your regular cover, you got your cover B, and your cover C. And then we also have a 1 in 25 variant for that one there. Uh, Superman Lost is on issue number 10. Kyle and I are both ready and excited to read Oof. all of it in one big giant chunk. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. caught up. I'm almost caught up. I'm like, I'm like two issues back. Like, okay. I'm ready to read that chunk. I'm yeah. pretty excited. So final issue, you got your regular cover, and then you have your beautiful yeah, cover that's B. Wonderful. Uh, Nightwing, Beast Wars tie-in, uh, Damien is, in fact, Mr. Mittens in this book, <laughs> and it is wonderful in every way. Uh, it's got Dick, it's got Jonathan, and it's got Damien. Perfect. Classic Nightwing's Wins the cat, pick of the week. It is. Uh, you got your 1 in 25 variant there, who is, in fact, uh, she is sort of a newish character, so that's not a bad book to pick up. Um... Kong versus Godzilla versus Justice League. Versus Atlantis. Yes. Uh, issue number four. Issue one was slow. Issues two, three, and four have been nonstop monster action versus superheroes. It's great. Uh, you've got everything you want from that. Regular cover there. You've got your Godzilla variant there, cover B, and your Kong variant there, cover C. And then your 1 in 25 variant for that there. Man, I really want to catch up on this series. And you really want to catch up on this series? <laughs> Issues 1 and 2 collected for you right there. So it's it's great. You got issues one and two there for all of five dollars and ninety nine, oh, six dollars nice. and ninety nine cents. So nice, perfect. Yes. Wrap around cover. Show the back. Ooh. Oh yeah. yeah. You can't have Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong without Kong on the cover. Exactly. Or half the Justice League. <laughs> and then uh, Jake Eric Flash is on issue number four. Still a good book. Uh, and then the one collected issue, collected edition from DC is Batman the Abyss. It takes place between Tinian stuff and Fear State and the Chip Tazarski stuff. Um, from Dark Horse, uh, Kevin Smith's Masquerade Volume 2, the final part of that series, collected in hardcover. 
uh, Crime Suspense Stories Volume 1 the, from the UC Archives, uh, Stranger Things, uh, Netflix, uh, The Tales from Hawkins, the whole collection in there. Uh, and then if you want the issues, you got your issue three from The Voyage. And then Space Usagi on issue number two, and it's wonderful. I love that color. cover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta love it. Uh, Black Hammer the End is on issue number five. Uh, Army of Darkness Forever is on issue number four. But the other big one of the week is James Bond 007. Woo! Garth Ennis is writing James Bond. He's doing it uh, in the style of the novels, and it's his first time taking on the character. So we got issue one right here. Uh, John was very excited about that, so he made sure we ordered more for the table. He was excited. He was all freaking stoked. He he was he was excited. Yes. <gasps> the beginning of this book is bonkers. So there you go. <laughs> this is good. Uh, from the Netflix series Rebel Moon, you got Zack Snyder's uh, series uh, issue one. Jump on it now, especially if you dug dig it. Um, Rick and Morty, Miss Me Six PI. Uh, we've got your cover A. And then you have your awesome noir variant cover B. And then, because you can never have too much cat manga, Masterful Cat is depressed again today, volume seven. You could just so. say all the random words and put the word cat in the middle and it would just That's be a mom book. That's what most of those are. Yes. Yeah. So, and then, kids books. Why are you looking at me like books? I read any of these? Yeah, things. you um, <laughs> It is exciting that we have a big old roll of Percy Jackson here. They just released a Percy Jackson show on Disney+. Plus. John's daughters are super into it. We've had a lot of requests for Percy Jackson stuff, which I thought was kind of out of vogue, but it's not. So it's kind of fun. It's um, great, great myth and mythological creatures and uh, a kid doing the right thing. It's probably better than Harry Potter. Um, my, my Little Pony has a one-shot. We got the Kentucky Roller Derby. Uh, and then we've got another one shot from Sonic. This is uh, Fang the Hunter. I'm not familiar with this Sonic character, but there he is. He looks cool. He does look cool. Look at that. Uh, Star Wars Hyperspace Stories gives us a graphic novel collecting issues five through eight. That is uh, all scum and villainy focused, which is pretty rad. We've got some new, uh, new old, old new Bluey Easter activity books uh, and sticker books uh, and uh, board books, which is really fun. And then a few things to fill in the spots on the table last week. Uh, original graphic novel, some Spider-Man reprints uh, featuring Madame Mask, and the two Juggernaut issues that are John Chu's like favorite Amazing they Spider-Man are issues. Fantastic, and they're collected in there. Really great, uh, fun fourth wall breaking Spider-Man story and Quantum Quest, and then uh, Spider Ham and Spider T Rex. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up uh, and go read James Bond because those first three pages were phenomenal. <laughs> uh, whenever somebody comes in the shop tomorrow, please make sure to say hi to CJ. Welcome her to the staff. Uh, Beyond that, I think we're good. We will see you on Thursday for Late Night Comics after we see you tomorrow for your comic books. Have a wonderful evening.